what they can to protect and, of course, help the patients of COVID-19. The World Health Organization has uh, estimated that among one or between uh, one in every 10 people that are positive globally is a healthcare provider. So far, the government has reported that 34 health workers have tested positive for COVID-19. So tonight on the show, we just want to focus on the frontline health workers. What are some of the issues they are raising or encountering as they help nations deal with this pandemic? And to help us with that discussion next to me, Seth Panyako, the Secretary General for the Kenya National Union of Nurses, and at the far end is George Gibore, who is the Secretary General for the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers. Before we begin this conversation, there was a strike that was to begin tomorrow, uh, Monday, 18. But we saw earlier today you had a briefing and called it off. Is it calling it off, extending the deadline? What was it all about, Seb? Yeah, the right word is that we suspended, or rather we extended the, the deadline for the strike and uh, we added 21 days to the government because uh, the main problem I've had with the government is that they have not been engaging us. But on Friday, we had a, a very productive meeting with the representative of the Ministry of Health where we discussed our issues. Among those issues discussed are those that are not even in the strike notice. Issues that are historical in nature that uh, other health workers feel like they are, the, the Ministry of Health has really been not taking serious about their issues. They have been only uh, taking care of one cutter within 18 cutters, the Ministry of Health. So we discussed all those issues and... Uh, we looked at the fact that the new director of, of health, uh, health uh, director of human resource, the minister of health, is barely two weeks in the office, and the work that he, he showed as he has done with, within a period of two weeks uh, was a commendable job. He already has gone through and has a list of uh, all health workers who are supposed to be promoted in Nairobi in, in national government, and he promised us before the end of this week on Friday all those uh, health workers will be promoted and they will not be looking, it is something like an affirmative action. They will not be looking at uh, when are you promoted, everybody is going to get promotion. That's the way they did for the doctors. Uh, again, on Friday we received a letter from the Ministry of, uh, of Labor and Social Protection where the CS was saying that, uh, and inviting us for a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, together with the CS for Health and uh, Chair, Council of Governors, uh, Honorable Weekly Van Beth of Paranya. Mm -hmm. And those steps, according to us, were the right steps taken by the government, even if it came late in the day. What we are looking for is any avenue, any opening that the government is going to engage us, is going to take our issue seriously, and looking, we were going to impress that, because when you look at the situation in the country today, we are faced with a lot of calamities. Right. We have floods that have killed about more than 200 people. In fact, if we were to talk about uh, national emergency, it's not about COVID-19, it's about, it's about floods, because we have lost 200 people. COVID, I think you are talking of 30 or how many people? Then we have the issue of locusts, which are destroying food in the, the northern part of the country. And then we have, of course, we can see on the TV, there's also political problems in the ruling party. So we want to appreciate that the government has uh, taken some steps which we think are available. 21 days is not a long time. If they don't act, we will come and will come forcefully. All right. And um, Gibore, Karibu Sana to the show. You are, you are also in that meeting of people complaining, or of course, pro, uh, healthcare professionals complaining. These are the clinical officers. So when uh, Panyako talked about, uh, talks about some CADA or the government not involving or engaging some healthcare providers, who are these healthcare providers? Are we talking about nurses and clinical officers only, or do we have other healthcare professionals? Thank you, Purity, for having me. Uh, I need to say that, uh, as my brother has stated, we have given more time to the government to address our issues. And of course, one thing that is quite eminent is that the government has not disowned any of the issues we have raised. Indeed, I want to say like what you have said currently, the government said only 35 have been, in, uh, have been infected. As a union, we have a responsibility to protect our members. We have been following it up. We have our data that now demonstrate of around 43 healthcare workers, which the government has still not updated. I think this issue is across the world. Mm. That uh, the, uh, like here in Kenya, we tend to forget about the healthcare workers, even during this time where every resources is supposed to be geared toward the healthcare workers. And I want to say that uh, from here we are, yes, representing two cadres, I think the, the nurses and the clinical officers. We have the medical laboratories, we have the pharmaceutical technologists, 
we have uh, the nutritionist, we also have many others like the public health officers, we have including the cleaners and even the mortuary attendants who are never even spoken uh, or rather even uh, mentioned anywhere mm. because by virtue of the work they do, including the hospital administration because the environment we work under is the same and the facility we work are the same. So they are actually subject also to exposure similar to any other health, uh, healthcare workers. However, when now you look at risk assessment, you might find that it varies from certain cutter to cutters. So these are what we call the, health pro, uh, the frontline healthcare workers who the government has been giving actually a deaf, uh, a deaf ear. But uh, we want to appreciate that. Yes, we had a meeting as he has said, and of course the, the CS for Labor has written to us a letter appealing that we give them time something that we have been looking that we can have a platform where we can engage and address the issues that are of great concern to the healthcare workers. They have given us that time. And of course, extending time, or rather giving them 21 days to do that, it does not bury the issue that we have been raising. It is actually trying to tell them that indeed we are willing to resolve these issues without disrupting the services where Kenyans are actually looking upon us to assist and ensure that we are able to, 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 to tackle and cap the spread of the COVID-19. All right, and we'll shortly be talking about those issues that you're raising even as we uh, fight this pandemic. But as I was asking my, uh, our viewers, your opinion, it's now the third month since the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the country. Today we reported the highest number of COVID-19 cases. 37, uh, 57 uh, of them, and now we are at 887. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion, uh, Panyako, on the country's response to this virus so far? I think the response of this country has not been what is expected of Kenya as a country in Africa. Because when you talk about Africa, you look at which are countries look like they're the powerhouses of Africa. You look at South Africa, you look at Kenya, Egypt, and maybe Nigeria. So Kenya should have been actually testing almost 5,000 people per day. We should also put in measure, measures in place that we, we have to begin reopening our economy. Mm -hmm. But here we are testing 500 people, 300 people. You got 1,000, 2,000, and here Tanzania has been doing 200 in a day, so 2,000 in a day. South Africa has been doing 5,000. I don't know what Nigeria has been doing, but I think with the financial muscle that Kenya has, we should be we, we should even be testing 10,000 people in a day. You see, the, the money that is being mobilized and put together is huge chunks of money, billions of shillings. But when you try to look how this money is being used, you see that there's actually a, a lack of prioritization on what's supposed to happen. I thought a testing of, 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 of Kenyans, not only those people are suspected, is key. When do we open our schools now? What are we supposed to do for our children to go back to school? We, what, what, what are we going to do for us to go back to a normal life? It may not be normal. It will be normal in the current situation. But I think as a country, we are not doing what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We need to test these people because some people might be enjoying because when they go there announcing this, this they have allowances which are they're being paid. I've been told they are, they're getting a lot of allowance per day in Africa. So they, they are not keen on doing, taking steps that are going to ensure that we go back to a way of doing things, not normally, but at least we reopen our country. All right. We have children going back to school, universities opening, colleges. We can even start by saying that let us have every school going child tested. And it becomes the responsibility of the parent to ensure that your child is tested. So once you are tested and, uh, and the school reopens, they can give parents like uh, one month. And then the, the country should go out there and ensure that we have laboratories all over the country where parents can easily move in and test their children and they have a certificate and they can go back to school. Mm -hmm. The same applies to, to our teachers because I don't think as a country we are ready to stay another three, three months uh, without going back to doing business. We are looking out the country, we, we already have a fragile economy, and the more we continue staying out like this, the more we're spoiling our economy. I don't think the country has responded in the manner that it's supposed to be. For example, the president said, let frontline health workers, let us have a welfare package for frontline health workers. The president never said, let us have a package for health workers. The president knew what he meant when he said frontline health workers. The first step that should have happened is to bring stakeholders together and agree who are these frontline health workers. 
then we can say, okay, the president has said frontline health workers, but we cannot leave other health workers out. So we begin by first, how do you assess to know the level of risk, for example? Somebody was on TV and I was so surprised, a uh, very senior person, a colleague of mine, a medical doctor, and he was saying that uh, you cannot use uh, the, number of, uh, the number of contact hours that somebody is uh, exposed to, 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 to a risk to, to, to cage the level of, uh, of, 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 of risk. I, I laughed off because there are 10 principles that we use when you are assessing risk. One okay, of and we'll be coming back to that. Let me also hear what he has to say in regard to the country's preparedness. He's saying we have not done enough. Uh, the Minister of Health officials have been on record saying that we have the capacity, but we don't have the uh, pharyngeal swabs, the, the nasal pharyngeal swabs that are used for testing. This is the main issue. Do you think we, 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 we have responded well as a nation? Uh, Purity, thank you again for this time. I look at it like we have a mixed reaction on that, uh, on that uh, question, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to say there is a part we have tried and there are other side that we have failed. And I want to say that like what we are looking the country running to, to actually do uh, li limited movement, or rather uh, uh, what we can call even a lockdown. I think we are just running after the disease. We are not tackling the disease, what is supposed to happen. We hear certain case, now we run there. We hear certain case, we run there. Like for instance, what he, my brother has highlighted, the issues of testing. The government has continually telling Kenyan that they have the capacity of testing 30,000. We still do less than 1,000. This is not what, if you tell people at least 30,000, then you should be able to do at least 50% of that. Now, since they say that, it's more than four weeks. And they have never moved to an inch to ensure that they are demonstrating to Kenyans that they are able to do that. This is even despite the Jack Ma contribution to this country, where he assisted this country to actually continue growing their capacity to test. They also said they were to test in mass the healthcare workers. This has never happened. It has never happened, and as it is, it is only almost around 3%. If it has grown, maybe because of those who are working there to be tested, it should be less than 7% of the healthcare workers. We are not even doing, we do not have the assessment, I mean health workers as, uh, risk assessment, to ensure that you are able even to track those who you can for, maybe look at and test. And I want to say that, one, when you are responding to such, a or to such a pandemic where we are, we need to be moving with the pace. The issues of training of health workers, we're still crying about it. The health workers have never been, uh, been trained. We are still talking about training. This is uh, uh, since March, and this is now the, I think the third, uh, four, uh, yeah, third month. That is a shame. Two, we're still talking about PPEs, recommended PPEs. Imagine you go to facilities, health workers, they don't have PPEs to protect themselves. Because if you don't protect the healthcare workers, you, do, you cannot protect the community, the people who are seeking services in that facility, and uh, similarly, you can't protect their family. So they will be a source of spreading the disease. All right. So, and the other thing I need to mention is that once you do those two, as we rely on the media to inform the country and the Kenyan, the public uh, uh, education must be able to be physical and must be seen to be happening. And that's why you see a lot of Kenya resisting. When you militarize the process of testing, the way you pick people once I've been tested positive, the way you pick my wife, until the relative says, I cannot. And I want to say this. My wife knows I see patient, and she told me, if you test positive, don't ever say you're married to me. Because of the process and what they're seeing on TV that we must be able to tell people and explain to them what they are doing rather than actually criminalizing the whole process. This is actually against the, the WHO recommendation and it has actually advised against this. When even you do the curfew thing, it must be in the line that you are supporting these people to adhere to the rules, not to criminalize. Because we have had people being arrested, put in the quarantine center, and then after 14 days, released home without a test. All right, and we'll be getting to those challenges, uh, Gibore. Uh, once again, you mentioned, Panyako, about reopening the economy. The World Health Organization has warned African nations, actually every nation against re re lifting the restrictions. 
They're mm -hmm. saying that we first have to focus on the, on the testing of the people before we open the economy. But do you have an idea on how this can happen? If I was a mathematician, <laughs> I will tell you to test 48 million Kenyans because everybody must be tested. It's not an issue of a few people. Yeah. And you are doing an average of 1,000 per day. How many years are those going to do? How many years? I'm not a mathematician. Uh, 40 million, 48 million divided by 1,000. No country has been able to test <laughs> Maybe 400 the years. entire population. You need 400 years or 40 years. I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, but I'm going to see very quick mathematics. What I'm saying is this. At the rate at which you're moving in terms of uh, testing, because when you test is when you, you protect the people who are infected and those around him, uh, around that person. But the, if we look at the world, the world Health Organization saying that people should not open up their economies, they're not being sincere. Because Africa is, a, most, most of us are still underdeveloping countries. We are not even developing countries. So we, 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 we will kill our economy. This disease is going to be endemic, you see? When it becomes endemic, it's not going to go away. It will be like malaria. So what we need is to quickly uh, move forward, do research, can we wake up and do your work, find a way that we can reopen back our country and protect those who are not infected from being infected. And you can only do this if you, you, you spear up the issue of testing. Let people be tested. Let it be like something when you are walking around, you can see it's being tested here and you go and you are tested. Then the testing itself has a problem. Uh, the way you saw those people in uh, Old Town in Mombasa complaining, you know, you, you, you're getting people there, and I also blame the media to some extent. You go, you see somebody's being, that thing is being put in someone's nose, the mouth, and pharyngeal, you can see how the patient's are reacting. You think the others will come. I think the testing, those who are responsible, the apparel people, you must make sure there is privacy to the, to the person you are, you are testing. Don't expose them because you are making other people fear. Even myself, I'm fearing. If I get this thing, you mean these people are going to do this. You know, I'm a health worker, but I don't like the way it's being done. Let it be some level of privacy so that we encourage other people to do it. But the more you continue doing it and showing on TV, the more you're chasing away people because it, it looks very horrible. It looks very uh, not, not, not humanly. But this country, I think, we must take bold steps. Bold steps. Our economy has gone down. Look around. Businesses are closed. No one is doing anything. For how long is it going to continue like this? How many people are, we, are, are going to be out there in the field dependent if we close this economy for another six months from today? We are going to have 93% of Kenyans dependent. Who will feed them? We must bite the bullet. Kenyans must un understand and accept that it is not business as usual, but we must go back to business. Mm -hmm. We go back to business, but not as usual. We must, for example, if in my office maybe I have 15 employees, we, we can agree, uh, let, us, uh, let us work seven days a week. Uh, and then we have maybe the first lot will, will work the first three days of the week, and the, the, four days, and then the other one, two, three weeks. Or let us lengthen the period of working. Maybe so that you want to have the work so that you don't have a lot of crowding in the office. You say, okay, we are 16, we cut you eight, because like in my office, there are others working in the field. But those who are in the office, you cut into half. We, we can open, start coming to work from six in the morning. By, by, by 11 or, or 12, I've released the first patch, comes in at 12, and by six, you're going back home. We cannot continue. Kwanza, these things of closing, look, pubs have closed everywhere in this country. How many people work in those pubs? How many people? How many? The proprietors of those, those pubs, how are they feeling? All of them, everywhere is closed at night, and yet we are saying all is fine. We must open our country, and we must open it with care. Mm -hmm. We must say for you, like the way they are doing with the hotels, uh, open, you must have a certificate, this distance of the temples, so on and so on. It must boil back to a responsibility of, of, of the people. Like, I like the, the, what they, uh, the long, long distance drug drivers in Mombasa at, who sit where? I saw them taking responsibility and they were saying, yes, we are accept to be tested. But what about those people, what about the people who are, who are carrying us? What about Makanga of the Matatus? What about the drivers? So they were saying, yes, we want to be tested, but let everyone be tested. All I right. think we must move with speed and ensure that we test a substantive amount, number of Kenyans mm -hmm. that can easily tell us if this is what we have tested, what is most likely those who are still at home who have not been tested and are infected. I am not supporting the issue of continuing to close this country.
Okay, and we want to really yeah. come back and talk about postal and health workers because that's what our discussion is. But Gibor, I want to give you an opportunity to tell us whether you agree with what Panyako is saying because the head of state, uh, even nations are afraid of opening the economy because there's not much that is known about this virus. We don't even have a vaccine. And uh, the reason or the explanation the ministry is giving or the National Response Emergency Committee on why we have to ban uh, any meetings that involve uh, large gatherings is because we are trying to maintain this social distancing and now yesterday we had an, an extension of the cessation of movement in at least five counties for another 21 days and also the dusk to dawn curfew businesses are closed what's your opinion uh, thank you very much uh purity i need to reiterate on the issues of opening up the country and i think uh it is in record that we, as the, more specifically the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers, we call for actually uh, cessation of movement immediately when the president uh, brought the curfew issue. We said people should not be able to move because you do a curfew at night, daytime people are moving across. So we said this one should not uh, have happened immediately because it should have actually stopped the movement of people who are moving around and spreading the disease. Because you can't tell people you don't move at night, then they move at daytime. And I need to say that we as a country, we chose actually to go by the advice of the WHO. And it should not be selective. The WHO has been on board, and I want to believe they have been seeing the country representative WHO, Dr. Rodiega, has been there persistently informing the country on what to take and where to go. So I want to believe that uh, we still have to trust them. On the issues of economy and where we are, indeed, we are in an extraordinary time. Things cannot be the same, uh, both economically and also our health. So for me, I still need to feel that uh, we don't have to rush to be there because we know what will happen. If we have a majority of the Kenyan infected, we know what will happen to this country and uh, we are vulnerable. So because we are vulnerable, the strict measure we can be able to take is what will be able to guide our tomorrow, is what will be able to guide when do we open up our country. And uh, yes, we will be able to struggle and as we have seen many people are not able to cope with it because they are lacking even something to eat. But I think that we need to deliberately uh, focus on this because you can see this is a country governed by politicians. They already shifted from the issues of, of the coronavirus. They are doing business which matters to them. And uh, that is where we fail because the resources will be direct, uh, redirected somewhere else. And I want to say the health sector has been forgotten for so long. The president has given the, four, the big four agenda where health is one of it. I think this is the time we will have actually maximized to ensure that the health sector is dealt with for once and for all. Then he forget and now move to the other three. If we did this during this time, including we saw 40 billion, including the other money that they are actually also borrowing, if they are directed to the health sector as they intend to, because I have seen their budget, is, there is actually uh, around the re less than 30% directly to the health, and uh, the other m uh, money is actually redirected to other places. So we want to say that let the president reconsider his position. If he want a legacy, he has been given on a priority, uh, I, I, I think a chance to ensure that he actually prioritize the issues of health and ensure that he's moving this country to the right direction. Don't move to the politics. All right. Thank you. Uh, so let's now talk about the healthcare workers. They are the frontline uh, right now in the fight against COVID-19. And I saw, if I'm not wrong, in part of your demands, you wanted uh, a double allowance on the transport. Probably you can tell us what has changed since mm. this pandemic. Uh, the truth for, is that- For uh, you, for the healthcare providers, in terms of the job. Uh, job satisfaction. Yes. The truth is that we have not seen much that has changed. Mm. We still have health workers who have not earned April salaries as we're talking now. So we cannot talk of uh, even being able to have personal protective equipment right at the, on the, on the, on the, at the lower levels of, of healthcare systems when the, some of the workers have not earned salary. I, it is becoming a serious problem uh, in Kenya, uh, failure to pay salary on time by the county government. And that's why we're saying one of the problems that should be resolved is to have the Health Service Commission to take care of the health workers of this country. Salaries, are education, everything, promotion, discipline, so that we move away from the issue of us fighting for 
butter and bread in terms of we have not earned my salary to now uh, moving to the step where we are now going to, to be part and parcel of uh, resolving the problems in the health sector in this country. But at the moment, we're still fighting for non-paid salaries. Uh, we, we, we went and we were asking many things when we, we, we issued, uh, before we issued the strike notice. Mm -hmm. Among those things was about the, the high cost of transport in Kenya because most of public servants in Kenya as well health workers, they use... Um, uh, public means and that public means the measure that has been put in place by the government we support and uh, we but we support but also they come in hand with a certain uh, cost of uh, cost implication now when you have to use two seats and you are one person you are definitely common sense tells you the owner of the matatu will have to double the price because you if you, you don't do that you will not be able to run that matatu so we, we that has not been done we, we were asking that uh, all health workers should have been tested right from when we realized that this disease has now come in Kenya, it has come to now become a community uh, infection. But uh, we, are, we were told it was going to begin and has begun. Personal protective equipment has been a very serious issue in this country. We have been told a lot of money has been uh, mobilized, a lot of resources. They are cut, but we are not seeing them on the ground. Where are they going? You go to a health worker and you are told that uh, you are supplied with a mask when you are going to duty at five in the, in the evening and you are supposed to take one with one mask up to the following day around 8.30. That gives you about 18 hours, when, uh, uh, 16 hours when a health worker is supposed to stay with one mask. Wiley, the required standard is not more than five hours. Mm -hmm. So we have those problems. And we have another problem in the biggest referral hospital in Kenya, Kenyatta National Hospital. In the medical ward, we have patients who are discovered to have uh, uh, COVID-19 when they had already been admitted, one of them died. What they did was to send doctors to isolation. But the nurses and other health workers, support staff were left. They have now brought other uh, uh, doctors to come and take care of these patients that the doctors have been put in, in quarantine. What will happen about these patients again? These doctors have been brought. So we want a hospital like Kenyatta National Hospital to lead by example. When there is something like that, treat all health workers as if they are equal people. Is it true that they are thinking that nurses are supposed to die? Clinical officers, sweepers are supposed to die and you only take care of one person. This kind of injustice streams right from Afia House down to the health facilities. You can see the discrimination in Kenyatta. My officials are calling me day and night. Today I've received an official who's telling me he's working in an ICU, but he has come on duty. He has found that he has been allocated in an ICU that is specifically uh, uh, identified to manage COVID-19 patients. This is a person who has all been trained. He, he, he doesn't know how to, talk, to go and take care of himself. And that's why we are saying that frontline health workers, to me, meant those health workers who are directly involved in managing this patient. Then those who are uh, in the screening area, like casualty departments, uh, outpatient, if they are, they are working, and then the isolation itself, the treatment area. Those who are the frontline health workers, the government ought to have given them special training and, of course, uh, gave them uh, special uh, 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 terms of employment, terms of engagement b b between this period, so that these fellows don't go home. They stay in a place like a hotel. Then after you have worked for 14 days, because uh, WHO standard requires that when you are exposed to a risk for 14 days, you are supposed to be given a break. You are tested. If you are okay, you are given a break. You, you, if, if no problem, you go back to stay with your family. After All another right. 14 days, you come back. All right. That's not happening in Kenya. Okay. And, and uh, before we get to the issues, uh, the exact issues during this pandemic, uh, Sabundi Peter is telling me, kindly ask Seth Panyako, what is the status of the 2017 CBA? The CPA is a 2017 CPA. You know, have, uh, it is one of the things that we had almost completed. Uh, we, have le we were left with three issues. One of them was risk allowance, which you have heard us talk about the level of risk. You cannot pay a nurse 3,850, and you are paying somebody who's fourth line. <laughs> you know, we have front line, first front line, second front line, third front line, and fourth line front line. You are giving a fourth line front line 20,000, and you're giving a nurse 3,800. You're giving a clinic officer 3,000 shillings without, without any justification. So we had not agreed on the risk allowance, but the way we were negotiating, there was almost everyone agrees that nurses should get higher risk allowance because uh, there was a document that was developed when Professor Nyong was the Minister of Health, and nurses were rated as high risk. This risk, but we are rated as high risk. And the proposal then was that nurses ought to have been given 20,000 shillings of risk allowance. It was never implemented. And then number two, uh, w w the, the, the issue that we have not also tackled in the CPO was the issue of grading structure. You realize that when SRC came up with the grading structure, it said that it classified nurses in two sections. One, 
and skill, another one same skill. And we opposed that. And everybody agreed with us, the two levels of government, that nurses are very highly skilled people. Even when you look at uh, Black Law Dictionary, you look at Oxford Dictionary, how they define a, a person who's skilled. What is required of you to be called a skilled person? You cannot read a nurse as a skilled person. And skilled, when you go to a dispensary, you find a certificate nurse is the doctor, is the nurse, is the pharmacist, is the lab person. Because at that le at dispensary level, you hardly find a pharmacist. You will hardly find a pharmacist. You will not even get a lab. And you get two people actually, a old man and a nurse. So, and you call these people same skilled. It is extremely wrong and it's un unacceptable. The last thing that we, we wanted, looked into was the issue of leave allowance. If you tell a nurse that leave allowance is 4,000, how do you expect me to go home with 4,000 shillings? So we want at least a basic salary, uh, not, not a one month salary to be given to, to health workers and nurses as a leave allowance. It's already happening in Moi Rifaro. We negotiated a very good CP in Moi Tinya Rifaro Hospital and all workers are given one month salary for leave allowance. And uh, th so those are the three items that uh, is holding uh, our, our negotiation. Then we have SRC grating uh, uh, public servants under partisan trading structure. We have the Public Service Commission, uh, the, the Ministry of Public Service, which has brought up another grading, uh, grading system, which is not like partisan grade. There's a lot of confusion uh, between uh, arms of government res responsible for management of human resource. Public Service Commission is doing something different. Public Service, Ministry for Public Service and, 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 and uh, Ministry for Public Service is doing something different. SRC is doing something different. State corporations are doing something different. The reason why SRC came up with the partisan credit structure was to ensure that every public servant in Kenya is paid uh, equally. That's where equity comes in. Because if I'm a nurse and I'm being employed, uh, for example, at Job Group C1 uh, at the first entry point, that should happen everywhere in government institutions. But everything, when they did that partisan credit, they saw, oh, if this thing we implemented the way it's supposed to be, nurses will get a good salary. So they revert again to the old one. Okay. So that way, that's where we are. We are the problem we have, the, the ministry is telling us we need to use the, the, the grading structure for public, from the public service, min Ministry of Public Service. And as we are saying, no, we are going to use the grading structure of Peterson because that is what has been recommended and advised by uh, SRC. That's All where right. we are. All right. Uh, Gibori, there has been a global shortage of the personal protective equipment. Of course, other nations are talking about it. And... Uh, Kenya, Kenyan health professionals are also talking about it. But do we have unique challenges when you compare other nations, um, health workers from other countries that they are enjoying some privileges during this fight that Kenyan health professionals are not? Uh, thank you for bringing that issue up. And uh, we need to say yes, of course, you ask yourself what has changed. And indeed, for me, I say many things changed. Because like what we are talking about, the PPEs are no, we, is something that health workers are not using always. So it is something new. And that's why we normally insist on training. Because on the uh, uh, infection prevention control, you must be able to tell people that you'll be using one, two, three. And when you are using this, how you put it on, that is what we call the don and off. You put it on and then when you are taking it off. Because the majority of the health workers who are working, in the isolation center and uh, directly to the patient who are infected, that's how they get infected. And uh, the training must be specific to that, where assimilation is happening. Now the government has adopted the system of training healthcare workers online, which might not be sufficient and it cannot instill confidence in the healthcare workers who are actually seeing this patient. So that's why we are saying the government must prioritize. And of course I need to challenge you. Look at their budget that they presented even to parliament. It did not have even as uh, 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 an allocation for the training of healthcare workers. When you ask, the Ministry of Health have been saying it want to manage the COVID-19 centrally. When you ask about training, a majority of the healthcare workers are under, under the counties. They tell you, you are under the counties. But they want you still to do the same services. They want you to do the same services with the elite, or rather with the same people who are a few who are working with the national government. So that's where we divert and we want to say that that must be done rightly. On the issues of the PPEs, the government has al already said and uh, actually enrolled a number of companies that are actually geared to, uh, toward assisting to grow the capacity to supply the PPEs, which they promise within two to three weeks, everyone will be, uh, and everywhere there will be enough which has not happened. And that is what agitated the healthcare workers because that is the priority. If you cannot prioritize the healthcare workers, we continue announcing on the numbers and those who have been recovered 
and you forget about the healthcare workers, then you forget the fundamental resources to fight, the, to fight this pandemic. Mm -hmm. That must happen. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing, when you talk about that, the healthcare workers are not enough. They are very few. Is we are talking about if we, have, we had enough, we'll be working in shift, what we call cohort, when you are managing the pandemic. You don't have everyone working at the same time. So that if one of them tests positive, then the people who are along that cohort, then they will be taken for quarantine and the services will continue to be running with the other group. This is, has not happened in our country and the government has not uh, adopted a structure on how to ensure that they are rolling this one out. And when I talk about this, it is painful because one, when you saw what happened in Ingara, when one of our officers tested positive, the facility had to close down. What are you telling the community? That this is a facility spreading the COVID-19? And the people now shy away from coming to the hospital? That is a bad management and they need to change. And when we talk about there are few, is that the government also resolved to employ more health care workers. They said within one week, we are more than actually six weeks. They have not employed these healthcare workers. Where did the urgency change? Where did the importance of having these people working change? Then we have people seated there, and indeed I need to mention that the ministry, during this uh, COVID-19, they came up with a task force on HR, a HR committee on COVID-19. They were to assist, ensure that the ministry were able to run along smoothly without any hitches. That has not happened, and those people still continue drawing uh, some uh, uh, actually package to themselves, what we can call maybe allowances. All right. And I need, let me finish about that issue, because they are employing these healthcare workers, also paying them minimal, without a clear structure, because we're saying all the healthcare workers, they have a scheme of service, which inform the entry point and how you grow uh, uh, according to your to the services you offer as the years come. But they give you very low, including what they call the interns, forcing people to, do, to redo their interns despite they have uh, gone through the interns. So they force them to pay them 15,000. They use them to offer the same services as the, those who are on PNP. So they have actually come up with what we call irregular contract against the provision of the Employment Act, Section 5.5, which provided that Actually, if you have to get someone on employment on a contract, you must be able to levelize or rather pay them the same because they are offering the, servi the services in the same environment the same way and mm -hmm. they have the same qualification. Right. So the government has actually muted that, which we feel that it is uh, something that they need to address and address it as a matter of urgency. All right. Uh, so, Seth, do you have more challenges to highlight? Because I want to ask you yeah. uh, on how best should the frontline health workers be protected in the country? Here do you know what my brother has said, I want to pick up. You asked what other people are doing outside that the Kenya is not doing. Number one, Kenya is o the only country in the world that will hire a nurse with a diploma and pay 20,000 and hire another nurse with a diploma and pay above 75,000. They are doing the same job, working so in the same hospital, delivering the same services. I have seen Joho. Joho is making a fan of health sector. I've seen him advertising to employ diploma nurses and clinic officers 10,000 shillings. That does not happen anywhere in the world. If there's an insult to healthcare system, it is coming out after this devolution. Mm -hmm. Health workers are being employed and put on dubious conditions. We, th the government is not serious. Look at a country like Ethiopia. It went ahead and, and uh, took a medical cover, life medical cover for all our health workers. So that if you happen to die as you, 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 you continue to deliver your duty, your mandate as a, as a professional, you are, your family will not suffer when you go. Uh, somebody will tell you, oh, you have Work Injury Benefit Act, but that's not enough. When you look at 24 counties, which the ministry was saying they have given them, the, they have, uh, given them comprehensive uh, NHIF cover, that's a joke because the NHIF cover, they deducted money from our pay slip when I was still working. They took 4,000 shillings from my pay slip and they, they said they are coming, to, they are going to have what they call civil servants comprehensive medical scheme. They took it away. When you look at the US, it gave 2,000 US dollars per month to her frontline health workers. The other nurses are being given 1,000 shillings. That they, they, you see, when, when, when you look at those countries, look at Ghana. Ghana gave a tax haven 
for all her head workers. Head workers are not paying taxes in, in, in Ghana. Uh, they, they have also in Greece their salary, basic salary by double. This is a country where you see people are reasoning. But here in this country, when the president says go and make COVID-19 well package welfare for, for frontline health workers and some doctors sit in Afia House and they say doctors 20,000, the rest 15 and 10,000, without any justification. And that is what has been happening. So what we are saying is that uh, health sector in Kenya, uh, the government of Kenya does not appreciate health workers. I see them saying on TV, we appreciate you. How do you appreci appreciate me when you are paying me 15,000 shillings. They say the SRC. I think there is something called SRC in this country that if I had powers, I'd demolish that thing. It, when we ask for salary, it tells us it will bring inequality, disparity in employment. We want equality. Where is SRC to talk about the plight of these health workers who have been hired for 10,000 shillings? And SRC, those fellows who are there, those commissioners, they know how to read and write. They read newspapers every day. They are seeing this advertisement. Why are they not advising those county governments not to hire health workers in this kind of terms? Let me tell you, for health for nurses, I can tell them the future is here. We are very soon, the next five to ten years, there will be no nurse to play around here. We are putting mechanisms in place to ensure that our nurses are properly prepared to work anywhere in the world once they complete their school. So that when they finish, we take them to, 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 to South Africa, we take them to USA, uh, Europe, we, we, Australia. So that's not the best and there do. will be no nurse <laughs> to be played around in this country. I'm telling you, I'm already speaking with the, with, with, with the nurses in, 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 in Europe. We, we, have, we, we had a Skype yesterday. And what we are saying is that uh, we, we want to use a foundation that has been formed by, the, by, by our union to champion the interests of nurses and also our fellows who are outside there. They are bringing money and giving to their relatives. Re their relatives are eating. So we want to start investing for them. We take you out. When you bring money, we invest for you. Very soon, there will be no nurse to be employed for 10,000 shillings in this country. Right. But on this one, I don't agree with you. Okay. We are winding yeah. up. Time is yes. not on our side. Yes. Gibori Shortly, how best should the frontline health workers be protected? Thank you. I uh, think uh, maybe before I respond on that, let me respond on one very grievous issue that okay. we highlighted on our strike notice okay. is about lack of promotion for healthcare workers, where we find that there are people who are employed oh, you for can more actually than 15 years. Highlight the issues on your strike notice yes. quickly. 15 years, they have never been promoted. Still, you continue seeing that person every morning coming to work and going away. And there are people who have been employed, they come and of course you find that they are being promoted and they're leaving you the same place. And I want to highlight a number of these counties, including Mandera, where a person is employed today, the next day they are very high job group because they are native and the people from the lower side are never promoted. And it is happening across the country and the uh, majority of the healthcare workers are feeling so much disadvantaged. There are people who you are employed in 2013, when you go to Lamu, the same people have been promoted to job group L, but those who are in Nairobi are still doing their job group H, the entry job group. And that is why the healthcare workers are feeling so much agitated, unsupported, and unappreciated. If this one is not going to happen all the time, and of course we have seen since the devolution that the healthcare workers have been agitating for a number of these issues, but it's not changing. But I want to say that they have, uh, the, that strength has not gone away. We will still push that right thing must be done. And of course, we have clear guidelines on this by the Public Service Commission, HR manual, which guide all the counties and all the employers on what they are supposed to be doing. Now, how do you protect the, uh, the healthcare workers? We have less than a minute. Yes. How okay. do you protect them? Educate them sufficiently and what, is supposed to be, uh, what they are supposed to be doing to protect themselves, protect their family, and protect their, 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 their people they are seeing by using the PPEs, right, re, uh, rightful recommended PPEs, because they are clearly indicated in every facility. If you are in a, a health center where you are in a high-risk region, what you are supposed to be using. And for those who are working in quarantine and isolation centers, what you are supposed to be doing. So all those people must be able to be educated and be provided by the requisite recommended PPEs for them to be able to protect themselves. Right. And uh, rightly, uh, lastly, is that these people must be able, like those who are in isolation center, must be given a place to stay when they are serving in those places so that they don't come from home risking their family and also ensuring that uh, they, are, they, are, they are not able to infect their people at home. All right. Uh, Sir, so I want to give you 30 seconds. Yes. If you have an additional 
uh, points in regard to protecting health, frontline health workers For, during Fortunately, this nurses don't have a very e serious issue in terms of, uh, of, uh, of training. Mm. Every nurse is trained on how to don and off uh, personal protective equipment. What we need as nurses is provide us with personal protective equipment. Before you even think of giving us COVID-19 package, ensure that every nurse gets his or her salary on time. That one is not too much to ask from the government. The COVID-19 package must be revised so that we feel we are all appreciated. But as far as I'm concerned, I want to thank the nurses of this country and the health workers in general, despite the fact that we're working in very uh, hardship conditions, we have put in all that we can put in. As much as we lament and say things must be improved, we continue to risk our lives. You continue to work and protect this nation. I clap for you the way others are doing. I give you mine. Thank you. Continue like that. As your leader, I'll continue fighting for your, your rights relentlessly. Okay. Asad Panyako, Secretary General, Kenya National Union of Nurses. George Gibore, Secretary General, Kenya Union of Clinical Officers. Thank you so much for your time. And we also okay. clap for you for representing the nurses. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let me finish with this tweet. Dr. Dr. Godfrey, you're, you're calling yourself at, at, at Ndongo Jr. on Twitter, sending a very emotional message saying, last night at midnight, my team and I sacrificing our sleep to attend to a distress call. Indeed, we are celebrating you tonight and every single day as the world continues to battle this virus. Now, I want uh, to leave you with two things. One, weather forecast. And number two, President's message during this time of course, fasting, celebrating the frontline healthcare workers on the tremendous job that they are doing to protect these community, communities and the country. And number two, the call to just adhere to the WHO recommendations on washing your hands, staying at home, social gatherings, wearing on that mask and so forth. Why don't you listen to the president himself? Thank you so much. But coming up shortly, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Your feedback time is not on our side, but I promise I'll sample you. I'll be having a look at them off air, and I'll also see you again next week on Sunday, same place, same time, of course, with a different discussion and different guests. I'm Purity Musel Baronabuli has been our sign language interpreter tonight. Good night. God bless. <laughs>